and one more episode of Build Your Own Stand or Enclosure. Uh, I'll get on with it. Cheers. Okay, guys, don't laugh at me here. I'm really out of my field now. So I've just been using this two-pot mix styrene-based bog or uh, bondi, whatever you call it. I don't know much about this, but I've used it in the past for things like this, for filling castings. You just put a little bit of the hardener in with it. Most of you will know more about this than I do, but I just wanted to include it um, for the benefit of uh, a few newbies. And maybe uh, some of you guys can tell me what I'm doing wrong. So anyway, it seems to work okay. I just mix it up so you get a consistent color. Don't put in too much hardener or it goes off too quickly on you. And then just trowel it into your low spots. And then everyone will think you're an incredibly good welder. Look at that, beautiful flush weld. Goes off, sits off hard pretty quickly. You uh, only need uh, to leave it for, well, I think only about a quarter of an hour or so, and then you can sand it off. Doesn't have to be too flash. It's just that when you paint it, it's a lot nicer if you have a nice, if it was a casting it would be a filled surface. Well that hole is going to have to be drilled out. Am I imagining it or is it going off already? Good thing I didn't mix too much. Right, might have to make a little bit more, but you get the idea. Okay, how are we looking? You can put a little bit on your finger, and you should have gloves on for this, and tidy up fillets. Even though there's bits of rag involved. Here we are, there's one closer, maybe you can see that better. Beautiful. There you go. In the past I've used aerosol paint, you know, uh, an aerosol etching primer and an aerosol enamel for a top coat. And it's, it's great, it's quick and cheap and it does a great job. Um, you just hang it up with some wires and spray away and you're all done in half an hour. Um, but the trouble is that in the long term, coolant and lubricating oils sort of turn it into a treacly gunge after a while, especially if you're brushing it with chips and swarth. So I've slowly moved away from that now. And the last job I bought some two pot mix armor coat uh, inhibitor epoxy primer so I thought I might as well use that for the first coat. It doesn't do as good a job brushing it on but you know at least I know it'll last the distance and um, this is only the uh, primer coat but it's come up pretty good. Here's a graphic example of what goes wrong for all you guys that want to save money as I have you know, aerosol paint, so quick and easy, so cheap. But look what happens. It's a disaster after a while. So I think you've got to use a two pot mix. Then it's covered in oil, it's in the bottom of the coolant tray, and it's just not affected. Um, or, or perhaps you could get it powder coated, but um, you know, I'm just looking at low-cost options here for people that are wanting to save dollars as well as do their own build. Here's another really good example why ordinary one-pot mix aerosol paint doesn't work. You know it looks great to start with but look down here where it's got oil and coolant sitting on it. It's right back to the bare metal. 
I suppose one good thing is it's not going to rust. It's coated with, it's either coated with coolant or oil and no paint, or it's coated with paint. So you could argue that it's um, not the worst scenario. Oh, while I'm thinking of it, um, for those of you who want to get on with building, um, there's a couple of key dimensions I'm not sure I mentioned. Um, it's basically constructed out of what we call angle iron here. Um, so in, in America, this is um, probably the main, um, where the main number of viewers are. To you guys, this would be inch by inch by one eighth, or um, in a metric, it's uh, 25 by 25 by three. That's the main section there. And this strip on the front that can't be angle iron because you've got the sliding door. That's a piece of inch by 316 will be the nearest or um, uh, 25 by five um, black steel bar. They're the two key dimensions for these doors and for the framing. Inch by inch by one eighth and uh, inch by 316 flat strip. As far as sheet metal work goes, it's definitely worthwhile making up some sketches of the parts you need and going down to your local sheet metal shop. It's actually really cheap to get some quite thick sheet metal folded up to the main shapes you need and uh, you need the specialized equipment to do that type of work so I wouldn't advocate doing that in-house. Um, but for the odd little light um, bit of sheet metal work um, I bought a little gadget which is really handy, you know, just for making this type of thing, a bit of flashing or um, something fairly light. Um, you don't want to have to go to the trouble of heading off down to the sheet metal shop if you've got something uh, quick and easy in your workshop. Um, and this little uh, folder, I mean a proper pan folder in New Zealand is very expensive, you know, like a thousand dollars or something. Um, and I can't justify that for something I use twice a year. But but a little um, cheaper, nasty folder like this. Gosh, this was really cheap. It was only, uh, what was it, less than a hundred dollars, I think. You know, you know where this is made and the sort of quality it's made to. But it's fine for this sort of thing, just for folding up uh, a little bit of uh, flashing and so on. So it lets me do a bit of quick in-house work. And if you want a low cost guillotine that'll cut any thickness of sheet metal, just buy a fine toothed bandsaw blade, just a carbon steel one. Um, they're really cheap and um, just file off the burr. It's good enough for most jobs. Well, I shouldn't talk too much about painting because it's not my area of expertise. It's not my field, that's my excuse. Um, I had some paint left over, top coat, Resin Euracryl 403, the yeah, two pot mix, cyanoacrylate, nasty stuff. I just brushed it on. It's not exactly the right color. Uh, it's the Tormac green. I really wanted a gray, but you know, I want to buy another hundred dollars worth of paint just for this little bit of work. So I'm not sure whether I'll change it eventually or change the rest of the enclosure to suit the Tormark Green. Anyway, um, yeah, I did wear my Garth Vader helmet. I know that cyanoacrylate paint is nasty stuff. Um, but yeah, just brushed it on. It's, it's not too flash. But uh, as long as I don't zoom in too closely with the camera, uh, it's it looks quite good. So anyway, they're all the bits and pieces ready to go. I've got to get it all back together and up and running for the next job. So I can't afford the luxury of sending you away for powder coating. You know, if, whenever you do that, there's always a delay, isn't there? And instead of it taking a week, it takes three weeks because their equipment's broken down and something else holds it up. And so I'm really reluctant to send jobs out to be done by somebody else. Of course, when you're painting small parts like these, you really do need to spray paint them. Um, and, and you need an etch primer as a starting coat. And gosh, that etch primer really is hard. I mean, it, it feels very different from paint. It's obviously really penetrating into the steel or adhering to it in, in a very different way uh, than ordinary top coat. 
So um, I can see the importance of an itch primer. Look at that, Tormac Green is also very close to China Lathe Green. So I made up a little cover uh, or painted a little cover um, to keep chips out of the uh, cross slide. This is a view out our window looking south down to Antarctica. Just to show you guys that we do get sun here in Wellington once or twice a year. Wellington Harbour. Okay, that's probably enough again for this episode. Thanks for following me on this journey, guys. Cheers. Yeah.